On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we talk about the legacy of Johnny Goudreau, as well as a couple of contracts that could impact Marco Rossi and Kirill Kaprizov, and PWHL Minnesota has a new GM. All that on today's show. Let's get to it. You're Locked on Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, we are your team each and every day. We thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, Alex Micheletti joins us as we reflect on the tragic passing of Johnny and Matthew Goudreau. We'll talk about their impact, the response from the hockey community, and uh, some lessons that uh, that we can take from uh, how Johnny and Matthew both uh, went about their uh, hockey lives. We'll also talk about a couple of interesting deals recently. Leon Dreisaitl come in uh, out today. And also the Seth Jarvis deal, which had an interesting wrinkle to it that you just really don't see in the NHL. And we'll talk about uh, some of the fallout from the Patrick Line trade to Montreal. Turns out the Minnesota Wild were very involved, but uh, there was a snag. So we'll talk about that, as well as PWHL Minnesota naming their general manager for the upcoming season. My name is Seth Topal, credentialed Wild Media member and uh, host of the show for the last three seasons, and uh, joins today by Alex Micheletti. And Alex, I wanted to kind of wait on the Johnny Goudreau reaction until uh, after the Labor Day weekend. Obviously, a tough end to the week last week, and it kind of extended into the weekend for the hockey community with the uh, passing of Johnny and Matthew Goudreau. And there's just a lot of really sad aspects of this. You know, they were both in town for their sister's wedding, and they were killed the night before uh, the wedding was supposed to happen. Uh, Matthew's wife was expecting a child uh, and you know, they, they both leave, they both leave spouses. They, uh, they both leave children. They both leave parents like just this, this huge void and not even getting into, you know, cause it, there was, there was some stuff that went on as part of this, uh, this tragedy that really frankly had me angry like even just pushing that off to the side like the uh the the guy who killed them was driving drunk and uh you know his reaction when he found out how long he was going to have to stay in jail was annoyance that really angered me and how the news was reported like let's push that off to the side because there, there's just a lot to process from that. Hockey World lost a really good one in uh, in Johnny Goudreau, uh, despite his uh, five foot nine stature, a larger than life figure, and somebody who, any way you slice it, loved the game, enjoyed the game, played the game the right way, and uh, it, it, as seen by the outpouring, it it really has been a tough last uh three or four days for the hockey community yeah extremely uh, uh johnny was a guy that you know i was in um college when when he was in college and uh just uh you know when i was at mankato um just followed his career all the way from when he was in junior with uh, dubuque on the ushl and then um you know when he was at boston college and he won a a national title in 2012. Um, and he had the game winning goal. Um, just, you know, he played the game with so much enthusiasm and, uh, 
um, he overcame, you know, his size um, at every level. You know, he was told by people, you know, from from all levels that, you know, his size was going to, you know, affect him. And, uh, you know, he just said, I'm in it. You know, I'm a hockey player that, you know, I'm not going to let how big I am affect, you know, how, how I play, you know, how he played. And so, um, yeah, just, um, uh, it's just so sad. And, um, you know, I just, it, it still doesn't seem real, you know, it just, right. yeah, it's, it, it's unbelievable. And yeah, when that, when the rumors were first coming out, I, I just like, this is, this can't be real. You know, that, that was hard, um, you know, to, to wake up to, to see that, that it, that it was. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, like you mentioned too, that, um, you know, it's, uh, what's tough is just that they have children of their own, you know, and now they're not going to have their dad and yeah. it was that no fault of their own, you know, that that's, what's really frustrating. We, I and mean, we, you know, it just hits closer here, you know, right down the street from where I live, there was a drunk driver that ran over, um, multiple people at park tavern, um, at, you know, in St. Louis park, um, and, and killed, killed two people. Uh, one of them was a mom with uh, three little kids. Uh, it's just, it, it's, it's so frustrating, you know, to see it, you know, continue to, to happen and, you know, not long-term consequences for, for people that, you know, kill people drunk, uh, driving. Yeah, like the thing that's most frustrating is, you know, they were just they were just out riding their bikes mm -hmm. like they were in town for their sister's wedding and getting a chance, I'm sure, to kind of catch up a little bit in person. It's the summer, so you want to be outside. And so they're they're riding their bikes. Mm -hmm. the, the car in front of this dude moved over to the left a little bit to accommodate them. And, you know, they they weren't in it was like you said, there was no fault of their own mm -hmm. car moved over a little bit. And this guy who he said he had five or six, which is anytime you say you had five or six, you can double that. No doubt. He flew over to the right side because he thought the guy in front of him was trying to prevent him from passing, which is just a bizarre reasoning to come up with and it's because of his actions that now the weekend in which it's supposed to be just a full celebration for the Goudreau family like now you are coming to grips with just a, a senseless tragedy that just should just should never happen and I mean I I don't know where to go like I have a lot of thoughts and as to, you know, consequences and even on the reporting side, too. And I just I just don't feel like it's the spot to, you know, to to go into it at this point. But I have some real issues with the the person that initially reported the story because of lack of attributed sources and. The fact that the Goudreau family likely had to find out about this over social media as opposed to from the authorities how it should be is something that really, honestly, it's beyond anger. Like it's it's a boiling point for me that a family should have to find all that out over the Internet. Like that's yeah. just never how that should go. And so it's I, I just it's I. It's one thing to, to, you know, it's fine to break news, you know, like if it's a trade or a contract or someone yeah. gets released, but you know, if it's a death, I just, why not wait, you know, for an official report from, you know, authorities that, that's, that's what really bothered me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, if you're an independent, you know, journal, whatever he was, you know, just, you know, breaking news on a contract, things like that. But when it's a death and, you know, like, I'm sure family saw it over social media and they didn't, yeah. you, know, you know, not, not heard all, you know, from the third authorities of, you know, officially that, that they had passed away. That was, that was tough. Yeah. It's like, it just, just let the authorities do their jobs, you know, when, because as somebody that works, that, that has worked in the, the media industry for a while, there's a process. We, we had a number of different crashes involving fatalities. And before you release the name as an outlet, 
There is a process that the law enforcement goes through to confirm with the family so that they find out from the proper channels. And the fact that that's not how this went is just something that really irritates me. You see it all the time in releases uh, until, you know, until next of kin is notified. Yeah. That was not in this case, uh, you know, and it got out way before that. And evidently this, this person from, it was a Philly um, Mm. outlet. Like a scouting has has uh, a history of doing this. And so I can understand, you know, somebody who is coming into the industry at an early age and maybe gets one source confirmed and thinks that that's enough. But if it's a pattern, like it's a zero tolerance thing for me. And so you have that, you have the guy that, that did all this, that chose to get behind the wheel after having several drinks. Like there just is a lot that really upsets me about how this went down. That doesn't even focus on the things that we should be worrying about, which is how the Goudreau family goes forward, uh, with their everyday lives. And the good part about this, the kind of reinforcing just how strong of a community that this is is that the GoFundMe has, since this happens, uh, eclipsed the $500,000 mark. Um, and, you know, you see wild players. And I'm I'm throwing out the ones that I've seen. If there are more, I'm not, like, I'm not meaning to try to not give anybody credit. But Ryan Hartman and Jared Spurgeon contributing. Uh, it, it just, you just love to see the hockey community come together Uh, especially in something like this. And the other part of it, too, that is really unfortunate. I don't know that I found a single person that had a bad thing to say about Johnny Goudreau at any level, whether it be college, whether it be at the World Championships. You know, I I saw this shared as well, that the last point that he had was on a Matt Boldy goal. And so think about Matt Boldy, you know, how he's processing this, having been a line mate with him uh, in the World Championships. but. It doesn't matter the level of hockey. I didn't see a single bad thing said about Johnny Goudreau at any point, which we need more of those types of guys throughout not only the NHL, but through sports in general. Well, it's it's amazing. You know, the you know, I always, you know, you take a look at players like who they play with, you know, throughout their career, like when they came into the NHL and and players that are, you know, like maybe they had their final year um, playing with Johnny, uh, you know, after long careers. And one of the tributes I saw over the Labor Day weekend was from Yarmir Yager. And yeah. uh, Johnny had the primary assist on Yager's last NHL goal. And just uh, it gave me chills reading um, the Instagram tribute that um, he, you know, he said to Johnny, um, you know, just like, um, like I mentioned earlier in the episode that, you know, um, he, he overcame his size to, to be a world-class uh, yeah. hockey player. And, um, you know, he just, you know, said how wonderful, um, you know, person Johnny was and, um, and prayers to, um, you know, the Goudreau family. Uh, it just gave me chills. And I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that Matthew is younger, you know, brother was not overshadowed in all this. Um, like you mentioned to yes. that, um, you know, that, you know, everybody was helping with this GoFundMe. Um, cause, um, his, you know, his brother's not, was not a multimillionaire like, like Johnny was, um, or, you know, his family is uh, going to be okay financially, but his younger brother was just a high school coach. And so, um, and you know, um, his wife is expecting a, a child, I think in December. Um, so they, they need all the help they can get. Um, so it's, it's amazing to see the outpouring of, of support from, from the hockey community. It's it, every time something like this happens or, or injuries, you see the hockey community step up no matter what. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, um, uh, you know, the NHL world can sometimes get a lot of flack for, things that happen off the ice and uh, or on the ice. But when, when there's situations like this, um, you know, the brotherhood um, comes together and, and their families. And, um, you know, I saw a lot of uh, like NHL players, wives were contributing, which was really cool to see like I saw yeah. Aaron's wife and just Victor Hedman's wife. So there was, I mean, you know, you, you see the, the moms uh, come out and, 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 and help as well too. So that, that was really cool to see. Yeah, it's just it's great to see all the support. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the other part of this that I will um, kind of echo to close 
is obviously Johnny had the opportunity to go closer to home. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't stay with the Calgary Flames. He ended up going to Columbus to get a little closer to family. And I think that's just the perfect way to kind of encapsulate this overall thought of like, you know, at the end of the day, a job is a job. Like, let's just all make sure that we're prioritizing the right things and not letting a 40 hour work week get in the way of family time or time hanging out with friends or, or anything along those lines. I know, I know everybody's going to make a living, Mm -hmm. but you never know. Like Johnny and Matthew were in town for their sister's wedding and it's just gone like that. And so just, let's just all make sure we're prioritizing the right things, the the things that you should be. And I know for me, these last few months have not been particularly easy, but it has given me an opportunity to flip perspective towards where it should be so that once the job search finishes, that I'll have a better frame of mind as to, you know, making time for the things that you should be. And so, you know, it's, it's a shame that it, that that type of perspective came out of a tragedy like this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if there's one thing to kind of take away, uh, I think from what happened is that just, just make sure you've got, make sure you've got the right priorities in line in life and just everywhere else. Yeah. yeah, This, this, like this tragedy, it hit me like a a ton of bricks, just like the Kobe Bryant one. I I, still, that was just, it gave you major chills. And, um, you know, these, these people are, they're, they're regular people too. You know, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, people put celebrities, athletes on a different level, but they're, they're human beings too. And, uh, um, you know, it's just, you have to don't take any day for grant grant, you know, it's, uh, you know, things like this can happen in a blink of an eye, you know, and, yeah. uh, um, even if you're doing the right things, um, you know, it, it's out of your hand. Um, you know, it's just, you know, situations like that, you can be riding a bike and someone can run you over and there's nothing you can do to, you know, to protect yourself or just, uh, um, stop it from, from happening. And, um, yeah, it's just, just, it's so sad. Yeah, it's it really is tragic. And thoughts to the Goudreau families as they continue to kind of put the pieces together. But we're all on a clock. Mm-hmm. And so just just enjoy every piece that you do. And I, I want to give Mike a shout out too. he had the nice notes um, when we posted that we weren't going to do an episode on Friday because at the time I just didn't feel like it was the right time to do one. Just because, you know, there are other shows that have more Goudreau stories to tell. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike reinforcing the fact that, you know, this this is more than just a listening audience of this show. Like, it's a community. And Mm -hmm. so everybody, everybody was hurting um, last week and continues to uh, throughout the uh, the early part of this week as well. And the only way that we're going to move forward as a group um, is just together. And yeah. So, my, yeah. Um, my heart breaks for, for Dean Evison too, because he yeah. just gets hired uh, in Columbus and now ha- has this, you know, just weighing on, on everybody in that organization. And just, it's just a really tough time to, to come into, you know, with, with training camp right around the corner and the, the Columbus blue jackets organization has been through so much in the past couple seasons yeah. with Matisse, one of their goalies, uh, you know, passing away from a fireworks uh, uh, accident. It's just, yeah, you know, it's, it's, that's, it's so tough uh, for, for that um, uh, organization. So yeah. that's, that's the, not only, you know, Johnny's family, but the entire organization, I, I, I can't even imagine in the, the Columbus community. Cause it's a, you know, it's a smaller uh, market and um, you know, they, they really have a passion for, for the blue jackets in that town. Yes, they do. Uh, well said, Alex. Well mm-hmm. said. Um, we're going to flip to some more wild pertinent topics to finish out the show. More Minnesota pertinent topics, I should say, because I've seen a couple of extensions recently that I think are going to have a pretty big impact on Kirill Kaprizov's deal. But one could also impact Marco Rossi's upcoming extension. So we'll talk about those and we'll also discuss the new general manager of PWHL Minnesota. 
All that coming up as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Folks, you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we've got a little something different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Do not miss out on this deal, folks. The NFL kicks off this week, and so the perfect opportunity for you to get the NFL watching started uh, is by heading to FanDuel and getting in on the action. Just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. Welcome back to today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen today, make sure to check out the Lockdown NHL podcast with a look at some of the burning questions in the Western Conference. We start off with a look at Anaheim, Calgary, and Chicago. So make sure to check things out uh, from the Lockdown NHL podcast, which keeps you up to date each and every day. They are your team each and every day, just like we are here at Lockdown Wild. All right, Alex, let's talk about a couple of extensions recently that some interesting wrinkles. And we'll start with a Seth Jarvis deal because and I, I got a chuckle out of this because you could tell the NHL insiders just weren't like expecting this deferred money. In Seth Jarvis's deal. Now it's not a ton, but mm-hmm. for an eight year deal, four hundred thousand dollars deferred each season to year nine, which doesn't exist. Uh it, it's enough to get you talking. And there were a lot of people asking, you know, why don't more players do these types of deals? Well, the main reason is because they want that money up front. Right. Like they want as much of that piece of the pie as they can get as quick as they can get it. And honestly, I don't blame them. Like if I was signing a contract uh, with a, a company to be one of their employees and I had the option to get the money now, as opposed to having some of it deferred until later, give it to me, give me, yeah. uh, give me every bit of it. And so uh, I saw some chatter on wild Twitter wondering, would this be something that Kirill Kaprizov might be amenable to for his, uh, his next deal? Heck no. No. I, I don't think so. Dundon, the owner of the Canes, has been notoriously known as being kind of like a, a cheap owner. Um, and you see, you see why Gensel, you know, I don't think Gensel wanted anything of, to, you know, part of that. And uh, Brady Shea did, did not go back there. Um, you know, so uh, I just, you know, I think negotiations with, uh, with that owner, uh, it can, can be kind of, you know, just, all over the place. Look at with yeah. Marty Nietzsche to it. Uh, um, I don't think he got what he totally wanted, but took that bridge deal. And this Jarvis thing was, you know, it's kind of a first of its kind, really. I mean, you don't, I mean, you see it in other sports, uh, but uh, you know, and then they have to pay out these guys long after their um, careers. This one's a little bit different, but uh, yeah, just uh, it's something I, I don't think we'll see a whole lot, uh, but uh, yeah, it just was was interesting. I think uh, Jarvis is. It seems like he's kind of a very loyal guy, and he always wanted to be back there. So that's why. Yeah. Um. The the biggest example of this was in baseball, the Bobby Bonilla contract. <laughs> he is literally still getting paid for it every July. I think he, I think he gets play. I think he gets paid until twenty thirty two. It's not and it, give that agent a statue because. Yeah. It was a small amount of money that he was initially going to get paid. And the agent was like, hey, you don't have to pay us right now. But if you give us this every year for, I don't know, the next 50 years, we'll uh, we'll be okay." (laughs) And the front office executives are like, this is brilliant. Like, we don't have to pay the money now. We just pay it every year for X amount of years. And they're like, "Okay, deal. And the agent is like, oh, boy, I. uh, I got one here. Yes, yes. Like we, we pulled a fast one and yes. 
you know, you bring up a good point because just the way that contracts are structured in the different sports with the fact that NHL deals are essentially fully guaranteed. You just don't see this as much. This is a no. prime. This is a prime NFL tactic because you may defer money into different seasons, like with dead cap or cap hits, you know, the Kirk cousins had this, the, the last couple of years that he was with Minnesota is he would sign like a three year deal, but because of deferred money and because of the, how the way the contract was, was put together, it was a three year deal that was only guaranteed for one stuff like that. And I, I am glad that NHL contracts don't have to deal with that as much. Although I, if I'm being fully honest, if I could incorporate any tactic from other sports into the NHL with their contracts, it would be to restructure. No, 100%. The ability to yes. restructure contracts right. and not have to, well, Parisi and Suter, for instance, that would have gone f- fundamentally different. But it's just that's just the nature of the fact that all these different sports have different standards for contracts and i can't even remember the last time a player had deferred money um for the nhl it probably goes well before i even started following the sport uh, i don't remember at all fashion. this is the yeah this is the first time and i've been <laughs> i've been following the game for a long time this is the first <laughs> i've i've heard of it so that, that completely shocked me but like i said this uh this owner is uh very stingy and uh you know contract talks with with a lot of players have you know, it's always been uh you know the strain uh, i'm sure dealing uh, uh you know agents dealing with them it's it's not not fun so yeah uh, be, be interesting to see if anybody else just decides to try to go this route um you know look at uh, look at brady shea he got paid big time and and nashville doesn't didn't, didn't have to deal with any of this nonsense no uh speaking of getting paid big time leon dreisaitl yeah. eight year 14 million dollar per year contract to stay with the edmonton oilers oilers twitter is it, it up at arms there are many that think that it's too much money. There are some that think it's not enough. I'm probably a little bit column A, a little bit column B, but I mean, he's, in, he's the second best player in the world. You know, Connor's yeah. probably going to get a little bit more than that, just right, right, rightfully so. But uh, you had to pay the guy. And uh, I mean, what he's done in the playoffs, too, he's been the best. He's been better than Connor in the playoffs as a playoff yeah. performer. Uh, just incredible. I mean, uh, you know, he willed this team, him and Connor, to a Stanley Cup uh, appearance. Um, and the year before, he was playing on a high spraying ankle. It's just uh, he's a he's a warrior. Um, he's everything you want in a in a player, and he gives it he gives it his all. He wears his heart on his sleeve, and you know, I I, I realize um, you know they're they are they're always going to be in a cap crunch uh, because uh, they have these guys, but you have to pay them and. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what they're going to do, you know, in the coming years, uh, but yeah, because they're going to have, uh, you know, a ton of money in, you know, with him, Connor and Darnell Nurse, who it's, is not it's worth fifty million dollars in four players, isn't it? Yeah, it's. I think it's, is what in, I saw. And they're paying Stuart Skinner a good amount of money and Evander Kane, and so it's just, uh, yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's going to get real dicey. They're going to have to have a lot of entry level guys to help fill fill out uh, uh, the rest of the lineup. And, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me to see them try to make another big move or try to get Darnell nurse out of there somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be <laughs> nice have to have to talk the, to him, but it'd uh, be nice to have that money available. Yeah. Like, because no, it always, it always seems to be that goaltending is always going to hold them back. You know, I mean, Skinner was a little bit better this year, but uh, you know, they had to deal with, you know, Jack Campbell and that was a misfire of a contract and yeah, yeah just, uh, just tough. Well, I think what this means for wild fans is look, here's, here's where I stand in the everydayers. I, I haven't changed my tune on mm. this really at all, but players like Leon Dreisaitl players like Connor McDavid, like Nathan McKinnon, 
And honestly, because of what he does for this team, and you can throw Kirill Kaprizov in that mix too, Mm -hmm. you just never recover if those players get away. Oh, you nailed it. Yeah, they're generational players. And so I know there's a lot of worry about whether Kaprizov's going to want to stay, depending on how this team does over the next couple of seasons. The reality of the situation is it's going to be all about hitting a number. Because again, you are you're bringing into does Kirill want to be the the top dog here, mm-hmm. or does he want to be the number two in Florida, in New York, in wherever? But if you get up to like thirteen, fourteen million dollars per season, there is a short list of teams that is going to be able to fit that on their books. Well, no, like, and I. And what I was, I, uh, I told somebody on X too, I said, money's not going to be the issue of getting Krill back here. I just don't, you know, Craig Leopold will pay whatever. I mean, we've seen it. He'll yeah. pay whatever it takes uh, to get someone here as long as they have, you know, salary cap room uh, because they are always a cap team, no matter what. Look at him. I mean, he signed off on the buyouts. He didn't have to do that, but he did. And he know he knows how big of a hit it is on the, on the business for that to happen. So it's it's going to come down to are the wild does Krill see them as a playoff team going forward? I mean, because if they don't if they don't make the playoffs this year, then that's that's when you start hearing the noise, especially from from his agent too. Because uh, yeah, you know it's is... you know <laughs> I mean, and they want and Krill wants to win. He he really yeah. wants to win. Um, and so uh, you know if he doesn't see that happening, you know that's you know that's where you know, other conversations uh, could start to happen. Well, time will tell, but if I'm, if I'm betting right now, mm-hmm. I'm betting that Kirill's next deal is pretty close to dry sidle. No doubt. I mean, yeah, it's uh look at, look at what he's done with this team and uh, <laughs> he's almost rewritten every single record that exists. Yeah. He just needs he's more years. He's yeah. 30. He just needs more years to get the others. That's the only thing like in terms of goals and franchise history, he can get that in like two seasons is all if he stays healthy. Like he has been that I mean, look, impactful. He's like, like 30 plus points more than the next, you know, uh, on the wild as, as far as points and what he does on the power play. I mean, it's just, it's incredible to, to watch him and uh, you know, they have to, they have the rest of the team has to, has to show, what what he's doing because yeah. he no matter what no you know like no matter the circumstances injuries i mean he he performed uh and you know he was playing with different players throughout the entire season so it's a testament to the type of the player he is he's generational and uh you know thank you boston for giving us the <laughs> giving the wild the pick uh for yeah. that to make that happen uh, we've got a final short segment to finish the show today. Some news out of PWHL Minnesota. A new GM has been signed by PWHL Minnesota. We'll tell you who and if there are Minnesota ties after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. We are your team each and every day. And I'll remind you, if you haven't entered yet, the Locked on Wild sweepstakes continues. Just snap a picture of proof that you're subscribed to Locked on Wild and email it to LockedOnWild at gmail.com and uh, we will get you in. Uh, so that you can uh, potentially win two tickets to see the Wild take on Columbus on opening night on Thursday, October 10th. So screenshot of proof that you subscribe on YouTube and your name, email it to LockdownWild at gmail.com and you're in. We'll, uh, we'll draw names once we get into October and closer to the season. Full description of the rules for the Lockdown Wild sweepstakes can be found in the description of today's episode too. All right, Alex, to finish off today, some breaking news come in uh, from the PWHL. Uh, I'll read from the official release from the team. PWHL Minnesota has announced the appointment of Melissa Caruso as general manager. Caruso joins the team from the American Hockey League, where she spent 15 years. 
Melissa stood out as the ideal candidate for general manager of PWHL Minnesota, said Jaina Hefford, PWHL Senior Vice President of Hockey Operations. Her strong background in operations and governance, combined with her extensive hockey knowledge and leadership experience, make her a great fit for the role. Additionally, Melissa's passion for the game, along with her ties to the local community, positions her perfectly to lead the team both off and on the ice. A resident of St. Paul, Caruso most recently served as Vice President of Hockey Operations and Governance at the AHL, a position she began in 2019. In her role, she oversaw the off-ice aspects of the AHL's day-to-day operations. This included the complex complex task of building the league's annual schedule across 32 teams, a total of 1,152 games. Caruso also managed the league's central player registry and handled bylaws, regulations, and player eligibility while working closely with the Board of Governors. And so all of the all of the everything that's happened over the course of the offseason for PWHL Minnesota. They get Caruso on board, and uh, it's going to be interesting for me because really the big thing for PWHL Minnesota is going to be how well she gets along with Ken Klee. Like that's, that's the number one story. That's the number one question. And so if they get along well together, then – I think we're going to see this team be able to start to build back from all that happened over the summer. If not, we uh, we may be looking at a repeat. No, 100%. Uh, I'm sure you saw over the weekend uh, a story came out uh, you know, that uh, Mike Zimmer did with the Star Tribune, uh, just how <laughs> the relationship between him and Rick Spielman just disintegrated and uh, – you know, she's, she's coming into a spot where, you know, Ken Klee and Natalie Darwitz, uh, they did not get along. They somehow still won, which is, you know, mind boggling for, for everything that happened behind the scenes. And so she's coming into kind of just a, a firestorm. Uh, you know, I wish her the best of luck. She was, you know, in a, in a leadership role in the AHL. So that, you know, she's a hundred percent qualified for, for the role. Um, and so, um, she's been in a leadership type of role already. Um, and so, uh, her, her task is to, you know, to win back, you know, part of the fan base too, that, uh, was very upset with, uh, the dismissal of, uh, Natalie Darwitz. And, uh, she has a tough task of getting that team to, to repeat. Uh, it's always yeah. hard to repeat in professional sports. So we'll, we'll see if she can do it. Um, I, I have no doubt with her qualifications that, um, that she that she is up to the task. Um, yeah, but we'll still, we'll see what happens for sure. Time time will tell. Uh, it sounds like there's going to be a media availability later this week. So uh, what I'll do, uh, we're still waiting to kind of hear what the name is going to be for PWHL Minnesota Two. I know that's coming up here soon. What we'll do is we'll get Alexis on because the season for PWHL doesn't start until I think November. Um, We'll get Alexis on to talk about this as well as what the uh, what the new name ends up being uh, after it's happened. Yeah, I mean um, that will help so much with you know growing these uh, these teams in the league so much more because you yeah. have you know just you can yeah you have an you know an actual team uh, name to to go with and makes it easier for the media every everyone involved in, in branding and. And in merchandise, you can sell so much merchandise with uh, with actual uh, team names. I think that that yeah. will help the league so much because they they need to get that going. Well, you get you get brand association. Then. Yes, people yeah. can people can relate to the brand of the team, and so we'll uh, we'll have more on PWHL Minnesota um, obviously all season. So make sure to stay tuned here at Lockdown Wild for that. Uh, that'll do it for today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank everybody for tuning in each and every day of the week. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not already and the like button before you head out for the day. Um, we appreciate those that uh, subscribe via Apple or Spotify or any of the other audio platforms as well. Wherever you tune in, we're glad to have you here throughout the week as we get closer to the start of the hockey season. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.